Look at all this! This is a haul that even Picard would be happy with! What I have here is a collection of items I first spied back in the February 1996 issue of PC Zone magazine. For some reason they titled the section Captain Kirk's Kit, but this is clearly Star Trek The Next Generation merchandise. As PC Zone put it, you can turn your PC into a Star Trek shrine with the following collection of next generation accessories, designed to turn your humble PC into the bridge of the Enterprise. Now, did I want this at the time? Well, kind of, maybe, no, not really, especially for the whopping price of £137.96, but it did intrigue me and became wedged in my mind until I came across this bundle for just shy of 50 English pounds. Okay, if I'm honest, of course I wanted it in the 90s, and I'm incredibly excited to take a closer look. I mean, I love Star Trek. Especially that bit where Picard finds out who his real father is. I am your father. Sensational. Let's start with the data holder. It's for holding a sheet of paper next to your monitor. You know, when you want to copy someone else's work. The clever part is that the android from TNG is called Data. And this is called Data. <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> So apparently this will reduce neck and eye strain and avoid headaches. Mate, in the mid 90s I was using a 60Hz 14 inch monitor at 1024 by 768 This wouldn't have made the eye strain and headaches go away, I can assure you of that. We also get an authentic Starship Enterprise, although we'll see exactly how authentic it is in just a second. On the back we have fitting instructions, but first we need to break into this. It feels like an act of sacrilege, but you know, if Steve1989 can do it with 60 year old rations, I can do it with this. Nice. So here's the monitor bracket which just sticks onto the top. Here's that authentic Starship Enterprise. Space. The final frontier. These are... And here's the arm which sticks out the side and holds your document. On to the mouse. I have no idea who that guy is or what he's doing, but he's only an ensign, so who cares? What's important here is we get a free mouse pad, and that the mouse is in the vague shape of a shuttle, I think? Anyway, here it is, held in quite tight, and yeah, it feels pretty robust, although those buttons make me a little bit uneasy. Hmm, yes. Of course, this is a ball mouse, currently in the cleanest state you'll ever see it. It's also a serial mouse, and there's no PS2 adapter, which is a little strange for this era, but most people would have had a free 9-pin serial port anyway. Here we have the mouse pad, just like we used to make them thick and spongy. It's a little small perhaps, but I'll put blind faith in the DPI performance of this mouse and presume it's enough. We also get this little catalogue in the box showing us the Brainworks collection. I don't actually have that disc holder, so we'll just have to make do and imagine it's here. Brainworks also made other transformation packs, including Nickelodeon and the Flintstones. I quite like that keyboard actually. Which brings us neatly onto the Star Trek keyboard. And wow, look at this thing. It's a keyboard. Yeah, no sh Sherlock. Transform your computer. Easy to install. High impact plastic and a free 250 games CD-ROM. Good god, this is exciting. On the back we get the overview. Look, it's got a wrist rest, non-slip rubber grips, big easy to read letters that I presume even a moron can read, and best of all, the flashes. Seven different light shows that you control. Let's get into this. So we just need to remove this Brainworks wrapper, and oh yes, look at that, it's even got the Enterprise's saucer section at the top. Quite a nice feel to the keys actually, and a massive gap in the back. You could fit another mini keyboard in there, and unveil it as a magic trick. Well, a Scion 3 anyway. 
We also get this little bag and this time we do get a PS2 adapter for those motherboards without a keyboard ding connector. And of course that bonus CD with 250 of what appear to be shovelware titles. We'll get to that later. The final item in this pie of Star Trek titillation is the monitor mask with that guy again looking high as balls. Look at that setup on the back, that chap is loving life right now. Let's get inside. First up we have another free mouse pad and some free attachment pads to really ruin your monitor. But let's get to the main show. Now this is the part which intrigued me most. I mean it looked like a piece of incredibly cheap flimsy plastic. But is that the case? Well, yes. Yes it is. It's like that plastic used to make cheap face masks, you know, the type you'd get at a birthday party only for it to shatter and force plastic shards into your eyes. Still, it kind of looks the part in a terribly nasty way, but that's what makes it so damn awesome. Let's go and set it up. Let's begin with the data holder. I need to peel that sticky pad off, which is still pretty sticky, and then stick it onto the corner here. Obviously this was intended for a CRT monitor, but I like this flat screen and it works better on camera. There we go, sticks just fine. I then need to attach the clip itself and the ship on the end for decoration purposes. And there we have it. We can then stick a document in and bathe in a bath of blissful ergonomic salvation. You still have to deal with this protruding arm, which can get in the way, just like it does here, but I feel that's a small price to pay. Next we'll set up the mouse. The pad fits nicely in this little space and allows for smooth, unhindered movement. This Star Trek variant has a serial connection of course, so I'll need to change the mouse configuration and restart Windows. And then bingo, a working mouse. Okay, so the final pieces. Check out that keyboard. Mmm, look at it, it's just so tasteless, I absolutely love it. We need the PS2 adapter for this PC, but then it works straight away. And of course, the monitor mask. Again, this involves more sticky pads, but we get this plastic mount which uses Velcro to attach to the monitor, another piece of Velcro at the bottom, and we can stick the plastic mask onto it. Obviously, the Velcro allows you to remove the mask at will, without leaving horrendous sticky pads and marks everywhere. Probably useful for when the only PC in the house was shared across the whole family. It could even allow you to buy the Nickel Odeon mask as well and swap it at will, if that's your thing. Oh yes, there we go. The USS Enterprise NCC-1701D in monitor form. Now this mask is designed for 14 and 15 inch monitors. This flat screen is a 15 inch, but unlike a CRT, the entire 15 inches is visible, meaning this mask is actually a bit too small. On a 15 inch CRT, the tube may be 15 inches, but the visible area may only be 14 inches, just like a standard CRT television and hence why early home micros had an overscan border. But I'm not going to let this ruin my day, I could just peek over the edge to see the start button. This screen doesn't actually let you change the size of a picture unfortunately. So how does this look altogether? Well it looks like this. Isn't it the most perfect trash you have ever seen? Look at that Enterprise, it's almost like watching the opening credits of Star Trek The Next Generation. Documents. The Final Frontier. The mouse is reasonably pleasant to move, although a little back heavy. If you put too much weight on the rear, it rises up, preventing the ball from making contact. But the ergonomics aren't terrible. As for the keyboard, the keys themselves are pretty nice, there's a good travel distance, a little spongy, but you know, I quite like that. I'm particularly fond it says Space, the final frontier, on the spacebar. And of course we have this built-in wrist rest. But, ah yes, it's just like the mouse all over again. If you put too much weight on this rest, the whole unit rises up, which is a little off-putting whilst typing, even with a document holder to help you. But the main trick is the light display on this baby. Look at that. It's like being on the bridge of the Enterprise itself. You can change the display using function and the up or down arrows. You can also make it faster or slower, and even keep it on whilst typing. 
You can tell Caps Lock, Num Lock or Scroll Lock are on because they'll flash independently of the pattern in this mode. I love it. OK, so we'd best check out that CD of 250 programs. And yes, it's a collection of the finest shovelware known to man. We've got Donkey Kong clones and the like, but I'm guessing this was really included because it has at least a few Star Trek based games. I mean, they're obviously unlicensed, but there's some entertainment there. I mean, I would have loved working through this CD in 1995 or 96. This was before I had the internet, so I grabbed any software I could lay my hands on. So there we go. That's the Brainworks Star Trek Transformation Pack. To boldly go where no man should go again. It's a glorious piece of 90s plastic finery. There's just one more thing left to do. I think instead of this... We need this. Now establishing data link. Accessing. Please input command codes. Command codes verified. Systems online. There's nothing quite like desktop themes for Windows 95, especially when you can make your own. But anyway, that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed inspecting these Star Trek themed accessories. For me, it scratched a 22 year itch and I feel satisfied. Click a video if you want more, subscribe if you want to be notified of more, contribute to my Patreon if you want some exclusive rewards or just want to help the channel grow. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and have a great evening.